Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. My name is Fixum and thank you for jumping back and joining the channel. First of all, jumping right into it. Um, Gamut Prime. Uh, really quick, just before I get into uh, the point that's going to get into. I uh, played this. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying this. Um, I played only a couple matches just because of my work schedule, so I really can't, you know, dig into it and grind it out as much as I want to. And to be completely honest, be completely honest, when Division 2 comes out, I'm going to be giving Division 2 a lot, a lot, a lot of my time. But without further ado, jumping right into it, um, I, I, you know what? I've been looking around YouTube. I've been looking around some of these news articles, and I've been seeing a lot of stuff going on with Anthem. And I've been looking at a lot of comments and hearing what people have to say in defense of Anthem and hearing what people have to say um, on Instagram, on YouTube, you know, on Twitter. Uh, and, and here are just kind of the back and forth that goes on between some of these games. And, and try to provide a, a bit of context um, for, those, for those who may not understand the frustration that people may have with Ansem. Because what I'm noticing as I'm going around looking at these particular videos and looking at these particular things. And I'm seeing people say this. I've noticed I see a lot of people say they do not understand why Anthem receives so much hate. They don't understand why they receive so much hate. They don't understand what's going on. They don't necessarily have a clue on what's actually happening and why people are so upset with the state of Anthem. So, I'm going to provide just a tiny bit of context just to give you an idea if you are confused why people are frustrated with Anthem. Anthem was developed back in 2012. 2012 was developed right after Mass Effect 3 and people were excited about it when they first heard about it in the E3. They came out with a trailer. When you looked at the trailer, when you walked through the city, one of the main things they talked about was this is an in-game trailer. It's an in-game engine. This is real time. You get a mysterious figure who steps out in front of you. He gives you a mission. You get to you get to uh, uh, explore all these different places, like the little walkers and stuff that come out, like on Star Wars. You see that in the background. The cities look illustrious. It looks beautiful. When you actually play the game, you go through the world like it looks like it's alive. Like these, it's that giant. Uh, I, I want to say like a gorilla-looking creature. It's out eating people. Uh, the the color and the brightness actually off the leaves because if you actually look at the game um, the E3, E3 trailer and look at the game like the E3 trailer it's very bright and it's very vibrant and radiant it looks beautiful when you actually uh, join in with people during the actual game like you can jump in like as you're actually playing I mean, which is really cool like when you actually pick up weapons you learn what the weapon is right then and there as you pick it up and here's the problem that I personally feel like that people have, in, in, which includes me too, because I, I, I tend to have this problem also. All those things that I've mentioned, when you pick up weapons, you can see it immediately as soon as you pick it up. The mission you get from the mysterious figure who jumps in front of you in the trailer, the visuals that you see in the E3 trailer, the actual feeling there's a lot of NPCs moving and lurking about and the mysterious figure who comes and jumps in front of your face to give you a mission all these things that happen are not in the game but but not only are they not in the game they're told and explained to as if they were now let me rewind it back a little bit more No Man's Sky before it came out was told that it was going to have it was going to have a um, multiplayer. You were going to be able to meet up with your friends. It was going to have a decent story. It was going to have all these things. When the game came out, that was a lie. Those things weren't there. It, I, I think if you remember, one of the biggest things that happened, people um, doing I think the first first day or second day when the game came out, uh, people actually met each other and they weren't able to actually see each other. They were on the same planet at the same time with these trillions of planets. They were the same planet, same time. Couldn't see each other. And it was crazy. It was crazy. Fallout 76. Fallout 76, first of all, it, <laughs> I'm like released so in, in such a bad state. So jacked up and so buggy. 
but they still want to charge for fifty nine ninety nine for a game that's devoid of MP, that's devoid of many NPCs that doesn't really have a story, and that for a post apocalyptic game that deals with loot punishes players for PvP, even though. It's kind of the thing when you deal with post-apocalyptic we're surviving this, that, and the other. I say I saw this to say because I'm not going to go too, I'm not going to go super, super in depth with it. We have a problem with the AAA industry putting out games that in an EFE trailer say one thing, and when the actual game comes out, it's something completely different. That's why people get frustrated and they don't necessarily like to reserve games anymore because once you put your money into the game. I'm like, once you, you, you already put your money into a game that you haven't actually seen the full product yet. And with Anthem, for instance, Anthem is almost like the last straw that broke the camel's back. I know people say, well, like Destiny that I'm playing now. Well, Destiny got better. It changed over time. And that's true. It did get better. But it took about eight months after the release date. And if you ask me, I didn't buy a game day one. So eight months, it could get better. You know what I mean? Because that's not the story that I was told. That's not that. That's not what I brought the game for. I didn't buy it so I can wait a whole number eight to ten months, and then Forsaken drops, and then say, like, "Oh, okay, all right. Well, I'm satisfied now." No, I mean to be quite frankly, the only reason I jumped back into it and jump back into this is because the actual game itself is free. Because I wasn't going to buy Destiny any other way. If it wasn't free, I would have just moved on with it. But I say that to say, in Anthem's case, Anthem has been out in development for, for since 2012, if I can remember correctly. With all those years of development, people would think that you would learn from the Destiny 2s. You would learn from the Fallout 76. You would learn from the No Man's Skies. And it doesn't seem like it doesn't. You ban people from actually doing things that are actually in your game. You got stuff that's in your game that's not support. I'm like, you got... You got stuff that's in the trailer, but it's not actually in the game, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever, because it's it's almost it, you just flat out just lied about it. Mm, excuse me. You can't. You, I'm like you. The, and the the loot drops so jacked up, and the status on the I'm um, like on the I'm um, like on the loot drops so jacked up. There's so many things that is wrong with Anthem, in the state that it drops. Because they, first of all, not only is the, like, the bugs in the loader screens are an issue, but things they just flat out lied about in the E3 trailer, people are just getting tired. So, if that doesn't provide you, and there's, I mean, if, if you want to look more into it, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go in super, super depth with it. There's more detail that you can look at. There's a lot of other things that you can look at going on with Anthem. But I truly think Anthem... In the gaming world, the people like me, the people who pay attention to what these developers say and stuff like that, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, enough is enough. So, if that doesn't provide enough context for you, I suggest you go continue to look up your information and continue to check out some of the things that's going on. People aren't just mad at Anthem. Some people are just going to hate on Anthem just because it's a cool thing to do. But for most of us, people don't like Anthem. And people don't like Bioware and these industries that do this stuff. Because... It's always just back and forth where they say one thing, but the product is completely different. So, that's all the time I have today. Thank you guys for joining the video. Till the next episode, I'll see you again soon. Peace.